Good evening and welcome to the News Hour Agenda. I'm Adhas Gopal Krishnan. Viewers, the Supreme Court today talked tough against bulldozer actions, saying that properties cannot be demolished just because it belongs to a person who is accused of some crime. The Apex Court asserted that properties cannot be demolished even if it belongs to someone who is a convict. The top court, however, asserted that it is not protecting illegal structures, underlining that demolition exercise should be carried out strictly as per law. Now, these strong observations of the Supreme Court on bulldozer action have sparked a fresh war of words with the opposition claiming vindication. But first, let's take a look at what the Supreme Court exactly said today. Observation number one, the house cannot be demolished just because someone is an accused. Observation two, is that can't demolish structures even if someone is a convict. The third observation, looking at the complaints, it appears that there is a breach of the rules. Number four, there's a need for guidelines. We will lay down pan-India rules. Number five, we are not for illegal constructions on the road, etc. Observation six is that but demolition of properties has to be in accordance with the law. This is what the Supreme Court has observed. However, the BJP asserts that all demolition exercise under the BJP governments have been in accordance with law. I mean, the Supreme Court has said that the bulldozer action is not a bad thing. It is a bad thing to do with the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has done it for the Supreme Court. समाजवादी पार्टी मानी सुप्रीम कोर्ट के फैसले का स्वागत करती है। Why the courts are there? Why due process law is there? Why constitution is there? Direct action is done by bureaucrats at the behest of leaders or politicians. This is against the constitution. Completely agree with the observation of the Supreme Court. The union government ruled by BJP and in particular state governments of BJP rule states such as Uttar Pradesh have, 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 have assumed certain people of having committed a crime and then they have gone ahead and demolished their houses. किसी किसी भी आरोप में में या या वांछित होने पर किसी का मकान, दुकान या किसी प्रकार का कंस्ट्रक्शन बुलडोजर के द्वारा नहीं गिराया जाता लेकिन अगर कोई मकान दुकान या कोई निर्माण कार्य किसी अवैध स्थान पर है अतिक्रमण करके बनाया गया है नियमों का उल्लंघन करके बनाया गया है तो निश्चित तौर पर उस अतिक्रमण को गिराया जाएगा और उत्तर प्रदेश हो या अलग अलग राज्यों में बुलडोजर की यह कार्रवाई विधि की परिधि के दायरे में हुई है जहां कहीं भी अवैध निर्माण है अतिक्रमण किया गया है सरकारी जमीन पर हो या किसी निजी जमीन पर हो अगर गलत तरीके से नक्शे का अनुपालन किए बिना अगर विधि विरुद्ध तरीके से बनाया गया है तो निश्चित तौर पर उसको विधि की परिधि के दायरे में ही बुलडोजर के द्वारा गिराया गया है You're watching the News Hour at 10, debate number one on Times Now, Super Prime Time. Let's take this across to our guest, Dr. Kaushal Khan Mishra, spokesperson of the BJP. Rohit Agarwal, spokesperson of RLD, is with us. Also with us is Sanjay Hegde, senior advocate of the Supreme Court. And joining us also is Ganshyam Tiwari, spokesperson of the Samajwadi Party. Ganshyam Tiwari, your response to what has been stated here by the Supreme Court. And uh, uh, do you feel, because the Supreme Court very specifically says that it will not protect all illegal structures, especially those that are obstructing public roads. And the court says it proposes to lay down guidelines on the issue. Do you think that this is a vindication of the stand that has been taken by certain political parties when it comes to bulldozer action? Good evening, Madhav, to you, my fellow co-panelists and the viewers. There are three important things. One, at the high level, the so-called yogi model that was celebrated by BJP as bulldozer model, celebrated by the Prime Minister in his rallies in Uttar Pradesh, and basically a model which is a kangaroo court where you want to say that justice is seen to be delivered, where you can pick any house on a uh, pretext of a crime, create a uh, media spectacle around it and go and pursue it with bulldozer. Supreme Court and, and Sanjay Higde is there, he can clarify further that Supreme Court has clearly said this kangaroo system is not India. This is against constitution. But this kangaroo system is, is not just limited to this. Uttar Pradesh is a land of atrocity under Yogi Adityanath, highest number of custodial deaths cases of fake encounter, allegations of fake encounters. And this uh, toxic system, which tortures the poor, comes into force any time you are a minority, you are a poor, you are a Dalit, and uh, whether it is Hathras or the bulldozer action. So I think Supreme Court sets a clear guideline. Okay. And this will act as an act as a antivirus 
to the virus created by the Yogi model, which was to be adopted by Madhya Pradesh and several other BJP states. This antivirus is required. This is the antivirus of Indian constitution. Okay. Let me quickly bring in Kaushal Kant Mishra. Kaushal Kant Mishra, of course, there are other issues which he's talking about, but uh, I want to focus primarily on the court has said. And specifically, the court has come out to say that the property of an accused or convicts can't be demolished. There are pan-India guidelines that have to be issued. And the court observes that there is a breach of the rules, apparently. Now, these are very strong words coming in from the bench. Now, I'm not second-guessing what the final order is going to be, but the observations are pretty strong. Kaushal Mishra. Uh, Madhav, I will request kindly go through the... What the... Uh, hello? Madhav, yes, please go ahead. Please go ahead. I am requesting you kindly go, go through the affidavit... Kindly go through the affidavit filed by the Uttar Pradesh government. Whatever the uh, this order is saying, the preliminary part, half the portion, means non-operative portion, is copy and pasted by the UP government's affidavit only, which clearly said says that no immovable property or uh, movable property can be demolished because owned, occupant, owner or occupant is involved in an offence. This is from the affidavit of Uttar Pradesh government. And Uttar Pradesh government also clearly said in the affidavit, merely because a person is alleged to be the part of an offence, it can't be the, uh, the ground for demolition. The line quoted by the Supreme Court is itself is taken by, uh, taken by the affidavit by the Uttar Pradesh government. So what is new about this? We are following the law. We are going through the law. But my blatant question to everyone that why all the political parties keep it, keeping mum till the time an organization like jamaat e ulema -e hind come forward and file the case whose locus is always in suspicion because the jamaat -e is fighting the cases for the uh, indian mujahideen isis al qaeda laskar e taiba 711 mumbai blast train blast 2006 malegaon blast 2611 mumbai terror attack they are defending the terrorists and they have got the history of defending 700 terrorists of which 500 declared by court they are terrorists so i am i am very much uh, shocked then why these people political party who are now crying doing hue and cry why they have not come forward and moved to the supreme court because this is a part politics of just to speak around vote buying politics hmm. court has said nothing new and we have seen that many times political party has moved on the demolition ground uh, uh, demolition drive to the supreme court and supreme court has said law should be fo followed and the Uttar Pradesh government is following law in legally le in letter and spirit both so okay you be governments following the law in letter and spirit this, this is nothing but order. politics being yes, played out please yes, respond yes, very yes, quickly yes, Gansham and yes. then I take it across Madhav. to other panelists yes Madhav in in February 14th February 2023 a tragic news came the headline read Gidgidate rahe lekin chala diya bulldozer bulldozer das logo ne kaha sab ko jala do पत्नी बेटी के जिंदा जलाने के बाद दीक्षित जी ने कहा अ हैपलेस मैन हिज डॉटर एंड एंड वाइफ वेर बर्नड एंड द योगी गवर्नमेंट मूव्ड इन विद द बुलडोजर देर इज नो नो वे बीजेपी कैन कैन डिफेंड दिस दिस इज एट्रोशियस पीपल हैव सीन एंड एंड इट इज शॉकिंग दैट दे से दैट इज जस्ट बिकॉज वन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन केम अप सिंस द डे दे स्टार्टेड ब्रैंडिशिंग देयर कंगारू जस्टिस सिस्टम ऑफ टॉर्चर टू द पुअर द सिविल सोसाइटी मीडिया एंड पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज एनीबडी हु बिलीव्ड इन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन स्टूड अप अगेंस्ट देम एंड हाउ मेनी टाइम्स शुड योगी गवर्नमेंट फाइंड दिस काइंड ऑफ ऑफ रिस्पांस फ्रॉम सुप्रीम कोर्ट वेयर दे आर टीचिंग हिम हाउ टू गवर्न इफ योगी आदित्यनाथ जी हैड एनी सेंस ऑफ मोरल फैब्रिक ही शुड हैव रिजाइन टुडे because it is his model that is getting demolished by this comment of this is what he brought the only usp of yogi adityanath was bulldozer and today it has been demolished by the supreme court if he okay. has any sense of moral fabric he should resign respond to that mr mishra and also there is a question there is a question that why are Madhav. these violations of municipal Madhav. law discovered after the crime why is there no action taken before because in the case of high profile criminals and high profile cases it appears that these municipal law violations are only discovered later why does that happen Because if some case comes in front of them, we, we, uh, the government and system find out who this person is. 
to find out the background and then it comes obviously if if i am uh, unknown person in the uh, legal entity means criminal law if they will find something they will uh, try to investigate what illegality i have and if there is some illegality if there is some legal notice has already been served and my question to my friend so samajwadi party spokesperson show me one case in which the supreme court has stayed the demolition drive in uttar pradesh on the basis of violation of law none till date none then why they are my and and, and another question why they are not speaking anything about jamaat okay. ulema uh, hind or halal why they are why they are hiding behind that 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 organization who is who is fighting for the terrorists okay quick response gun shot and move across to other panelists can you, can you think about Madhav, that since there's a question directed to you quick quick response please and i move across to others yes bjp because at, as a party it is turned into a bundle of propaganda and lies they they use arguments that can be demolished punctured for example the headline that 16 leaders of bjp have illegal construction this is the current delhi minister doing a press conference he named the 16 leaders so for them to say that no we only demolish illegal construction there is a name of 16 leaders in delhi not far away from uh, the appreciator of bulldozer model the prime minister himself not far away from his Why? residence so bjp has turned itself into a bundle of propaganda and lies and their arguments are demolished in the supreme court and on the media dr mishra and then i go across others dr mishra that's just one one observation Why the, the Samajwadi Party or any political party is waiting for Jamiyate to come to the court? Why they are not moving to okay, the court? Okay, okay. I think this leaders. debate is now going and around in circles. Uh, Let me bring in Sanjay Hegde. Sanjay Hegde, the point being made over here is none of the uh, uh, demolitions have been stayed by the apex court, and what has been submitted by the UP government is pretty much part of the observations today. Do you agree with the submissions made by Dr. Kaushal Kant Mishra? Absolutely not. Let me tell you what has happened in the Supreme Court earlier. i have a client called ganesh gupta ganesh gupta is a fruit juice seller in jangir puri you will remember that there was some incident in jangir puri and your media friends turned up with the bulldozers the matter was going on in the supreme court the supreme court immediately stayed those actions despite that the government of uh, at that point of time refused to listen to the stay order then there was a cpm leader who coincidentally happened to be there who stood in front of the bulldozers so to go on national television and be entirely economical of the truth or entirely bereft of the truth does not behove a major national party which can, which rules the country there have been several uh, uh, petitioners before the court and it's not the jamiyat e ulama in which is the only petitioner that is one of the petitioners and for the information of the bjp spokesperson and your viewers the jamiyat e ulama e hind happens to be translate as the as assembly of the learned in india and it was this body which opposed mohammad ali jinnah in pakistan and they said that the creation of pakistan was an islamic so please do not go by whatsapp do not go by propaganda and do not think that everything in urdu is simply sinister mm. as What? far as bulldozing is concerned as far as bulldozing is concerned the supreme court very rightly said that even if you are convicted there cannot be bulldozing of your house as punishment let me illustrate it further let us assume that ajmal kasab was an indian you caught him you hung him and after that could you bulldoze his house the answer in law is no an unequivocal no the idea of collective punishment is unknown to the constitution of india and to any civilized society okay bulldozing Let's, is yeah. bulldozing of the rule of law in this country and the law does well, not sanjay hegde sanjay hegde uh, sanjay hegde your arguments uh, be the as they may Uh, only one point that i completely disagree with that media turned up with bulldozers media covered oh, the bulldozers yes. that were already there the i don't think that's correct you no, no that's not correct anchor you want me to name the anchor no no let's not let's not get into that let's not get into that and you know that that, that will that will take the debate into a completely different direction but the point that you make of collective punishment ishkaran bandari i want you to respond to that point that's nowhere in the constitution is it there that there be a collective punishment 
there is no legal accountability of the family of an accused, the manner in which they are punished when the house is demolished in this manner. And this is selective. It's targeted. And that's the questions that the Apex Court is raising. Please respond to Sanjay. First, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the law on this is very clear and settled. So I want to read from one news article. Rajasthan government under Chief Minister Ashok Gehlot arrested some people for paper leak. And then the house of the main accused, one Mr. Bhupender Saran, was demolished. That was a Congress government. That was Rajasthan. That was early 2023. Nothing to do with BJP because this debate seems to have become, is BJP doing illegal demolition? So I thought, let's have a perspective because the Supreme Court, when it is passing its observations, is saying it will lay all India guidelines or for every state government, if it feels the need to do so, let's depends on the case, whether they feel the need to do so or not. The second aspect, why only this case? Do you remember the infamous Hyderabad? about gang rape and then police encounter. I was on television and I said encounters have no place because then it makes it very easy for the police to encounter anybody. And that proceeding has gone on and the commission was established and those policemen are now facing investigation. Again, a non-BJP government. So it's very convenient to come on TV and identify BJP is doing this or Congress is doing this or BRS in that case was doing it. But let's first deal with the facts of this case. What the Solicitor General himself in the court said is this that of course nobody's house can be demolished if it is a, even if you are convicted but if you are violating the municipal bylaws then your house can be demolished as per that municipal act so has the supreme court ruled that any demolition carried out was not as per municipal bylaws was no, of a particular state of a particular house then which state government first we have to identify that let's not do lazy opinions on uh, television in which we can pick and choose whichever state government we want to attack. The reality is this. Nobody who is being convicted or is an accused, his house can be demolished for a crime he's done. He has to be sent to jail if he is convicted. But if your house is built illegally, then demolitions do carry out. And even in today's hearing, the Supreme Court said, we will not protect illegal buildings if you have built lands on uh, in UP. So many demolitions have happened because people have covered riverbeds, because people have covered jungles, because people have done illegal construction, which is now being called into account. So let's be clear on what we are arguing here. A, it is a problem which many state governments have. Are they carrying out demolitions correctly or incorrectly? If they are carrying out incorrectly because somebody is accused in a criminal case, that of course there's no place in the constitution. That mm. is settled law. Even if you are convicted, does not mean your house can be demolished if it is a legally built house. The third aspect is whose house is legally built or illegally built as per the municipal bylaws of that particular state that the court is seeing. And as of now, the court has not identified any one state government with one particular piece of land which is illegal. That is why I started by giving the example of BRS in a police encounter case when BRS was in power and also the example of Rajasthan when Congress was in power where the accused's house was demolished because the development authority said the house is illegal. So let's know what we are debating before we take pot shots at any one particular government. Interestingly, Sanjay Hegde, he mentioned BRS. There's actually a controversy on in Hyderabad and I'm not sure if you're aware of it, but uh, over there yeah, also the not. state authorities, the Hydra action, etc. It's similar. They're uh, claiming that this is happening yes, over yes, there yes, as well, yes. and that's also a violation of the law. Look, now, two wrongs certainly don't make a right, but the question is that it's not restricted to any one particular political party. This appears to be a larger national issue. There was also the issue when, you know, in uh, Mumbai, the uh, Sena UBT government uh, demolished yeah. uh, uh, the Ranao. office or residence of a particular actor. Yes, Kangana Ranao. Let me, let's say the name. Her uh, her uh, building got demolished, and then then. Uh, the matter was taken up to court and uh, the, the court passed suitable orders. See, I, it's not the Supreme Court's position that nothing can be demolished. You saw those huge towers next to your office, the super tech towers, which were dynamited. If something is illegal, you have gone through a due process, you have given a notice, you've had a hearing, you have determined it to be illegal and said and told the person, look, you remove it. If you don't remove it, I will remove it. Have all those procedures happened in a, all these cases? Certainly not. In the case of Mr. Ganesh Gupta, I can assert that it was not. What happens is that you decide that in this area, troublemakers live. You decide that you, you have to do demolitions. You turn up. And uh, uh, sorry, I can even tell you the name of the media personality who turned up with those bulldozers that day. 
uh, all your viewers know who it was. Yeah, let's not and get into so, that because that's no, another, no, exactly, that's, that's another exactly, debate. It's another exactly day. Exactly. Yeah. No, I'm not debating it. I'm saying that bulldozers are popular because they, perf they perform a spectacle, a hmm. spectacle of terrorizing the citizen, saying that the state is all powerful. We don't care what you, uh, what you have, what sweat you have put into that property. Okay. If we think that you are uh, you or somebody associated with that building is wrong okay. we'll bring down the house yeah that let me bring in is... ishkaran on two points two points you know that uh, is being stated here by sanjay hegde i'm just going to read out what the supreme court said in 2023 it's not the first time that bulldozer action is being questioned mm -hmm. is the administration prepared to acknowledge mm -hmm. that bulldozing houses is a wrongful act and will they see such actions this is 2023 additionally in february i'm told the madhya pradesh high court has mm -hmm. pulled up the local administration of ujjain for demolishing a property without complying with the principles of natural justice and law and stated it's become fashionable for the local administration mm -hmm. to demolish any house by drawing up proceedings without complying with the principle of natural justice and publicize the demolition in the papers it's not by one isolated hearing here uh, ishkaran and that's why i've cited two separate hearings where similar observations mm -hmm. have been made by constitutional courts Madhav, that is why I started. First, let's put the debate in its correct perspective. It is not any one ruling party's government. We have examples of uh, governments belonging to different political parties who have taken this route, including as I gave you the example of Rajasthan. That is why I thought it's important to put the debate in its correct perspective. Now, the second aspect, as any citizen or a lawyer, nobody's house should be demolished except by the procedure established by the municipal law of the place he lives in. But there is another reality where in railway land, people had built houses. And when the authority after notice was carrying out demolition, people made it into a religious angle. That also is very often exploited on social media as well as on TV debates that absolutely blatantly government land and you build house and then you make it a religious angle that this is our land even though you have no documents you have nothing to show to the courts and there are various such demolitions by the high court and the supreme court carried out so under the garb of this that the state action is not as per law let us not try to legitimize illegal construction on government land on railway land on river beds on forest these are two separate issues that is why supreme court even today in its observations was very careful to observe that we are not in favor of illegal constructions on roads or highways or public land what we are talking about how is the process of demolition being carried out and I don't think so anybody can object to that anybody who is an accused his house cannot be demolished only because he's done some criminal offense even though he's not convicted at a stage even after he's convicted you can't do it but the second aspect under the garb of this illegal occupation of as I said railway land or public land by giving it a religious color which is done very often on TV debates that should also not be done we should be be very clear that Kagas ko dikhane padenge ke aapka kaise land hai. Okay. I want uh, Lokesh to come in on that. Lokesh, there is no connection. Certainly, of course, when demolition happens, due process has to be followed. But uh, don't connect the demolitions that happen. And of course, we earlier heard Mr. Mishra saying that you then inquire when there is a high-profile case about the past antecedents of a person. And that's when, in some cases, these demolitions take place, when they've clearly violated municipal law. Do you think that's a fair argument? It is not the first time that the Uttar Pradesh administration has been pulled up for misusing the Gangster Act 1986. In 2020, Allahabad High Court pulled up the Uttar Pradesh administration. Again, in 2022, the Uttar Pradesh administration was pulled up. Supreme Court again pulled up in 2023. And now with this particular judgment, again, Uttar Pradesh administration is being warned not to misuse the Gangster Act 1986. Now, this act... It had a complete different intention altogether. Over here, the district magistrate had the power so as to attach the property of the accused. But this act, the Gundas and the Gangster Act, it had a complete different purpose altogether. What the UP government and administration uh, started doing is, it started bringing every trivial offense and settling political scores by misusing this act. And this was used to the extreme. Even if a person was convicted, immediately the Gundas Act, the Gangster Act was imposed, the property was demolished, and subsequently the due process of law continued. Now this is something which is unconstitutional, which is illegal, and this is over here that the Supreme Court did the right thing, uh, pulling up the state administration to uh, restrict it, not to take judiciary in its own hand.
We must yeah. uh, ensure that there's a complete uh, separation of the legislature and judiciary, executive and judiciary, that the state must adhere to. So over here... Let me bring in the RLD spokesperson on that. Rohit Agarwal, what he is saying to an extent is borne out by the facts because uh, whether it is 4 July 2020 when UP gangster Vikas Dubey was killed by eight cops or it is the bulldozer action that continues in Gorakhpur against gangster Rakesh Yadav. This is on uh, June 2023. In January 2024, there is action taken against history shooter Munna Yadav and in April 2022, there is bulldozer action on Saharanpur against the rape accused. There appears to be a very clear pattern of those who are criminals, high-profile cases, and then immediate demolitions happening. Is it all merely a coincidence that all of them had municipal law violations and were others in the neighborhood also at the receiving end of such actions? Madhu, there should be a fear of law in criminals. And don't you uh, think, do you think that uh, criminals give notice before committing a crime? If not, then why you need a notice before uh, bulldozing their house? Then is the family of victim is not uh, um, uh, affected? Sir, Only we expect very, with due that, respect, uh, sir, nobody is justifying right. criminals. But, what about but at the end of don't the day, we expect our governments to follow the law. Or is that too much? This is... In the same panel, in the some same panel, somebody was uh, taking a stand for uh, Mohammed Kasab. In the same panel, he was saying that uh, uh, Mohammed Kasab uh, uh, family uh, was innocent. So, so uh, he's saying the law the, does not uh, allow for even a terrorist house to uh, be demolished. Uh, I think uh, that's being a little attack. unfair. The Don't point being made, Rohit Agarwal, is this. There have been a number of political statements uh -huh. also coming in from top leaders, whether from UP, whether from MP, uh -huh. defending this kind of bulldozer action. And today when the Supreme Court says that you are in breach of it, that raises some serious questions on those defense of bulldozer actions that we've seen in the past. The problem is this, that opposition have a soft corner for criminals, but they do not have any sympathy for uh, the victims. They, 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 they feel uh, that criminals should be given a human right uh, choice, but victims' family should not be given a human right uh, rights. So, so these people are standing with the criminals. Do you think any of the innocent have been bulldozed? Only the people who are doing heinous crimes, their houses are being uh, bulldozed. Look, no, you're no, standing no, with the no, criminals, no, and those accused of heinous crimes, you believe in the human no, rights of criminals, no, not of the victims. No. Please respond to Rohit Agarwal. I'm finding it very difficult to control my laughter because, trust me, this is a bizarre argument. When we are talking about rule of law, sir, the country, the administration shall govern on the basis of rule of law. You cannot give a license to the administration to violate law. If that happens, everything is gone. It becomes a state of anarchy. So we need to understand you that be you ever so high, the same law way, is always you above you. You will be moving from the opposition to the, the government. Administration, the administration cannot appropriate draconian powers to itself but you on the garb of dispensing justice. Victims. Dispensing justice is the sole domain of for the courts and that should not be appropriated under any condition by the executive. All right, all right. We'll have to leave it there. We'll have to leave it there. Dr. Kaushal Khan, Bishra, Rohit Agarwal, Ishkaran Bhattari, Sanjay Hekde, Lokesh Jindal and Ganjam Tiwari. I'd like to thank all of you gentlemen for joining us. All eyes will be on the 17th of September when the Supreme Court hears it again. What will be the suggestions coming in from each side? All of that will be watched very closely. Thanks so much for joining us this evening.